Okay, uh, let's get this started. Hello! So what I usually do first is, you know, just do some simple sketching, I guess. Problem with that is you have to figure out what we're actually drawing. I think... Uh, let's mess with my brush setting a little bit. Alright. I think we're gonna just put some hills or something in here. Uh, I don't like that. Let's do something in the center. And more like this. It's a nice big triangle. Eventually that will be a mountain, but for now it's a triangle. Actually, I'm going to scoop this over a little bit. And... There. And we got two triangles. Actually, I don't really like this the way the shape of this mountain is. So let's try something a little different. Already looks like a mountain to you. I am glad to hear that. Let's see if we can get the second one looking like a mountain, though. Does that seem like a better shape? Let's see, add a little bit of. No, that's not right. See, when I first started drawing, like, a couple of years ago, drawing digitally, I would draw mountains and they would just be really flat. Like, there would be no depth or anything to them. They would just be like, there, there's your mountain. And, I mean, I would add texture along the edge, but they would still be these flat triangles. And then, eventually, I realized, it's like, no, these, these are three-dimensional. You have to add shape to them. They come towards you. So, I mean, it's like, you know... It's more like a pyramid, except way more complicated than that. So now when I draw mountains, I usually draw the triangle shape and then this little squiggle thing so you kind of get an idea of depth and how it's going to come towards you. Um, and it, it it made a huge difference in making these triangles actually look like mountains. 
And, and I mean, at this point, it's really just a stet- sketch stage. Man, I said that wrong. Um, but it still gives you an idea of what they're going to look like. And then when I go to flesh it out later on in the drawing, I'll, I can kind of see, you know, like, oh, maybe there's like a little, you know, nook or cranny over here. And you kind of, it gives a whole lot of depth to it. Um, and so, yeah, that was interesting. Do you know what colors you want to use? I haven't thought that far ahead, honestly. I haven't the slightest clue what colors I'll use yet. Um, I, I usually will figure that out once I have, um, a sketch that I am happy with. And then I'll start thinking about colors. Mountains in the background here. Those, those mountains look kind of like squashed, like they're really flat. Stumpy, they're stumpy mountains. I, I do think it is important to think about color, um, you know, because that really sets, you know, a tone and a mood. I just don't always think about it right away. Okay, so we've got some mountains. Now the question is, what else do we add? I don't like these ones. Those look kind of weird. Oh, my pressure sensitivity is being funky. I don't know what's going on with my tablet, but it's been doing that where it's like sensitive and then all of a sudden it'll just stop and then it'll be fine again. Hmm. I feel like I've been watching a lot of Bob Ross tutorials recently because they're so entertaining. He's amazing to watch. Um, so I feel like this is the point where I need to add some like happy little trees or something. Although, you know what? I think I want to do something with the sky. So maybe let's pull these down a little bit. And... Let's do something up here. What are we thinking? Yeah, pressure sensitivity issues definitely are not fun. I'm just glad that it just occasionally acts up and then it goes back to normal. I don't know at what point I'm going to have to buy a new tablet. Clearly that's in the future at some point. But. Alright, let's see. Alright, we can do like a moon or we can do like a solar eclipse kind of a thing here. Hmm. I saw a solar eclipse in, uh, what year was it? Was it 2017? 
and that was amazing. We, we, uh, yeah, that was the, the total solar eclipse that went through a good portion of the U.S. I can't remember exactly what year that was. I think it was 2018 or 17. I think it was 17. And that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So I would love to see another one. All right. Let's just go all out with space stuff. We'll just say this is the moon. And let's just stick like this little planet thing right here. And we'll give it some rings. Really big rings. This is crazy. No, I don't like the composition, the way that pulls the composition. Let's try... Let's try something big. No, that might be a little extreme. So let's try something more like this. And then we'll do like this here over here. I love astronomy and space stuff. It's fascinating to me. I always joke that if there are parallel universes, I really hope there's one where I'm like an astronomer or something. So this seems pretty crazy, huh? We may need to tweak the mountains a little. also help is getting a better round shape so I think this is really huge do I want that big of a planet thingy in the background okay let's try more like that shape I think that's better
Okay, we definitely need something back over here. Balance it out. I think one of the hardest parts about sketching is like you've got to think about like what you want to draw and how you want to draw it, but also the composition and how well it lays out and and then you're just doing like simple lines like I'm just sketching with black and I'm not doing any detail or anything. So it's like you got to figure out, you know, like how do you it, it's basically like representation, like you're representing what your final drawing is going to be with a couple of black solid lines. But since you've never seen, you know, the finished drawing, because you haven't drawn it yet, you're not sure, you know, what's the best way to represent it? How, how, how should you go about this properly? So, I don't know. I find sketching kind of fascinating. And it's fun and frustrating simultaneously. I think... Let's flip around because I'm thinking I want a light source moon doesn't actually work like that does it okay we'll go with this then <laughs> composition is awful it takes so much thought and my snail brain cannot handle that I I relate I, I don't totally always know how to go about composing things. It's just kind of like trial and error. Does that look good? Does it? I'm not sure. You know what? Let's just go with it. And you just kind of like mess around until things work out and hope for the best. And I mean, there, there are actual tactics, uh, not tactics, techniques for composition. And I'm aware of some of them. But when I'm actively drawing, they just kind of all disappear out of my head. And I just kind of go off of tuition. I've been having trouble with sketching lately, so I feel you. Yeah, sketching is, you think it's so easy because it's not the finished thing, but it, it's hard. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. And then sometimes you'll have a great sketch and then you go to like polish it up and something just like breaks in the process and you're... It looks terrible, even though your sketch looked fantastic. All right, we need something in the foreground here. Um. Hmm. I feel like we need some water just because reflecting this moon is going to be fun. Hard, but still fun. What do we, how do we want to do the water? Hmm. Maybe let's do something more like a, a river or something rather than like a lake. No, oh, that doesn't look right. <clears throat> oh, and there goes my pressure sensitivity. Okay, come back. Come back! I need you! Come on. I don't understand why it does this. <laughs> Cause look, the eraser still got the pressure. Okay, may maybe it's working. There we go, now it's back. I don't I don't understand why it's doing that. I don't know if my tablet is dying or or what, but
All right, but now we have to ha make the river go somewhere from the opposite direction. So, uh, let's see, where do we want it to go? We'll just have it disappear behind this hill and not worry about where it came from. All right, well, now we need some stuff on the left. Can't add water over there because we just did a river. So let's add some, I think some hills. These ones I usually, I usually like, when I'm drawing hills and stuff, I usually make them more like mounds and lumps. But I think I still kind of follow the, you, they still, you know, you still want to add depth to them too, not just to mountains, even if they're more lumpy. Oh, that doesn't look right. The thing with a river, too, is the water's gonna be where, like, it's lowest on the ground where the gravity would pull it. So that means anything else I draw here is gonna be a little bit higher up, because otherwise the water wouldn't be where it is. So, actually, let's just walk off the corner of that right there. Okay, now we need something in the corner here. Okay, and this is the point where I usually would just stop and say, Oh, that looks great! Let's add some color and figure out the color scheme. But I've realized that one of the things that I tend to neglect when I'm drawing is I have a lot of stuff in the background and I don't have a whole lot of anything in the foreground, which, I mean, technically you, you don't have to ha have, you know, something real close up to the, the camera, so to speak, but it helps to add depth and a little bit of complexity. And actually it can help with composition too because you can kind of like frame the image if you, you know, you stick a tree over on the side, it's just kind of a little bit of framing. And so usually I, I would just stop here, but I think that's something that I need to push myself to add sometimes is stuff that's closer up to, to add more depth to it. And, you know, so I think we need to add something close up and I think easiest thing to do would be to add some trees. So we got a new layer and yes this is totally how you draw trees. This is this is great. Actually I think we want a couple of layers of trees, not just them super close. Get some further off too. That might be too big. So those hills aren't that close. Actually, is there even any point in those? They're gonna be hidden. There's no point in drawing those ones right there. <laughs> okay. Yay for the undo button. I love drawing traditionally, but you can't beat having an undo button in digital. I mean, some some traditional mediums are more forgiving. Like, I've been doing a lot of stuff with oil paint, and you can just kind of, like, paint over your mistake. 
and pretend it never happened. Um, but... You know, even that only goes so far. These these will be trees eventually. These I, I swear they'll be trees eventually. They they will yeah. <laughs> like I said, sketching is representing. Add some trees and stuff over here. Now the trick is to not forget that these scribbly lines are supposed to <laughs> represent trees. Alright, I think we need something up. I'll add a little tree here. Let's add some next to the water here. I think the another interesting thing of, that makes digital art different from traditional is like when I'm painting on a canvas or you have to think about like layers and like you got to do light things first with things like colored pencils and markers because they don't really layer up much. So you got to do the light and then you slowly work your way to the dark. And then sometimes you start at the back and you work your way to the front. So like, like I mentioned earlier, I've been watching a lot of Bob Ross tutorials and like he starts with the sky and then he does the mountains in the back and then he adds, you know, like the water and then he adds like a little island in the water and then he adds the trees in the real front. So you just, you start at the back and you work your way forward. Whereas in digital art, I can work on whatever layer I want and in whatever order I want. So I could work, you know, front to back or the back and then the front and then the back again. And it's like, a totally different, you know, way of going about it. And in some ways you can look at it as like, oh yeah, I have more freedom to do things the way I want. But I think it's, it, you know, there, there's a different, it's just a different way of going about it. And so it has, you know, its own sets of pros and cons. But, I don't know. I just thought that, that was interesting to think about. All right, let's erase some of the stuff behind these trees so we can kind of see what's going on. So now's, now's the point when we step back and look at it and go, okay, does this actually look like something decent or do we need to change things? Because if it looks decent, then we can start adding color. If it doesn't look decent, we might want to change it now rather than, you know, an hour from now. <clears throat> Let's try flipping the canvas and seeing how it looks if we do that. Why am I forgetting where to do that? Here we go. Okay, that looks weird to me. I don't know if it looks weird to you guys, but it looks weird to me. Let's see what it looks like upside down, just for kicks. Okay, I don't think no, looking at it that way helps a whole lot, though, so let's undo that. <clears throat> I feel like the composition is a little bit off, and I think it might be this planet a little bit. Let's see what happens if we scoot the whole thing over. This is another benefit of digital art, is I can just lasso this and scooch it over. <laughs> Can't do that 
with marker or paint. Okay, we want to line it up with the edge of the mouth because then you get some weird effects. Yeah, I don't think that looks right either. What if we scoot it over this way? Let's let's put it on its own layer. Alright, now we got it lined up with this mountain here, because you can kind of see, like, the ring just kind of goes in, and then it bleeds into the mountain. And whereas, there'll be different colors, you, you, and when it's finished, it won't really be a problem, necessarily, but it's still something you kind of want to avoid. You don't want things to line up like that, it's kind of weird. So... There we go. And I think we need to move this moon a little bit. I think, actually, it's hard to judge the composition at this point because I've got so many sketchy, messy lines that it's making it hard to tell what is going to be actually heavy in the drawing and what isn't. So let's go back to how we had it before. And let's try adding some color. <clears throat> so, all right, let's just make this blue. And we're going to make the sketch white so I can see it. Actually, let's make it like a light gray. And... This is where we have to make some big decisions, right? Okay. Adding some green. Let's just make these whole hills green for some moments. Green. <laughs> All the other slots green. Okay, well, those are the easy parts, but now I have to decide what I'm doing with the mountains. 
Like, are these, are these snow-covered mountains? Are they green mountains? Are they just brown mountains? And then what to do with the planet? Um, let's do something bright colored. And... Hmm, so I feel like I want something purple for this. There we go, there's a nice purple. And then, because our light source is clearly down somewhere because of the way the moon's lit up. So this planet's going to be in kind of in shadow. I do usually add, when I'm, when I'm adding color, I don't like to do flat color all at once necessarily. I mean, I kind of did for the green, but for the moment. Um, but I like to add, incorporate the shading as part of the color. Um, so, you can kind of see, smooth this out a little. And let's go with a gold color for these rings. So maybe something more kind of orangey. That's really bright. And let's go with it. Let's add some darker colors to this. There we go. But now we have to come back and tackle these mountains. Let's let's just start with some brown. So let's go with a little more of a muted brown. And technically not even brown that's like a grayish purple okay let's go back to brown though and can add some more color so this is the point where I start trying to play with color to add depth um, This is one of those things where for the longest time I was just kind of like doing it on intuition and hoping that it was working. Um, but I pretty recently had it pointed out to me that basically what happens is things on the, the warmer side of the color wheel, so like red, orange, uh, some shades of yellow, some shades of purple, pink, um, those are really vibrant when they're close to you but the further away it gets they kind of like lose their potency and eventually it gets far enough away that they kind of like disappear entirely and then you end up with just cool colors um so you know blues and greens uh cooler shades of yellow cooler shades of purple um so one way to make something look like it's closer to you is to make it a warmer color um so I'm going to add like this warmer brown on these ones up close here, but I'm going to actually make these ones back here a little bit cooler. No, that's too dark, too pale. Yeah, it's not much of a difference at all. There we go. It's subtle, but it's something.
And then another thing with mountains is kind of like you make one side a little bit darker and a different color than the other, and that kind of adds the three dimension, three dimensionality to it. Um, I feel like I want to add snow to the top of this one. That's too gray. Let's do kind of going with a light blue, and then I'll go in with a, like a white on top of it to like add a little bit more, and then we'll go in with a little bit of a cooler dark blue on the other side. Get a softer color in here. There we go. Add some. I'm not gonna go pure white, but we're gonna get pretty close. Can go on top of that. Yeah, I'm gonna take this lighter one over here. I like to mix colors as I'm putting them down. So, like, I'll take a color and I'll put it down. So I've got this uh, opacity pressure sensitivity turned on, so it'll be more opaque the harder I press my stylus into the tablet. So I'll take a color and I'll draw it like really faint on it rather than, you know, real hard. So that way it kind of like blends the two colors together and then I'll take that color, I'll pick that color up and that's what I'll actually draw with. So you kind of get multiple colors out of it. And that's kind of how I got the, the brown, is I just kind of did it light on top of the blue, and that was how I got this color right here. Um, so they kind of mixed together, and then I went with, you know, the other brown on top of it. You know, I feel like the ring and the mountain kind of line up too much. Hmm. Let's turn the color off for a moment and go back to my sketch. And I think I'm going to scoot the whole ring over. Down here. Accidentally took part of the planet with. Okay. Now we have to. <laughs> redo this yellow gold orange color whatever color it is Or the planet to work with. Extend the shading out a little bit. I think if you look at that from a distance, it reads a little bit better. Although I wonder if I should take it a little further.
Hmm. Whoops. Okay, let's... I think we want to take it in a little... Give it the shape a little bit. I think I want to do something with this one too a little bit. Let's the warp. So that way you kind of have an idea that this these two pieces of the ring will meet up together somewhere off the canvas. I think they're pretty high up on the planet. Like they don't look like they would cross over the um near the equator. So let's move the whole planet over a little. See, I try to fix as much of this stuff as possible before I start sketching, or before I start adding color, I mean. But some of it, like, you don't realize that it needs to be changed until you start adding the color. And then you're going through and modifying things, and you're like, wait, what about making progress with the color? Okay, let's try to just pick some of this up and move the color. There we go, now we just fill in the gaps. Fix this little mountain here. Yeah, see, but now we've got the edge of the planet and the mountain lining up over here. So we're gonna take the mountain and go more like that. There we go. Whoops. Line that back up. And I think these would be easiest to just So I don't know where this place is. It's clearly not Earth because we don't have a giant purple planet in our sky. Um, it I don't I don't know that you could really get two planets this close to get you know this kind of visual without the two of them you know like colliding with each other. But you know sometimes when you're drawing you gotta ignore the science and just have fun, right? Is it possible? No. Does it look cool? Yes. Okay, let's go with it. All right. So I think I want to model air. Okay. 
Could this landscape be the moon of, the, of this planet? You know what? That is actually... That would make a lot more sense. We're not on the planet. We're on the moon looking at the planet. Um, that That's definitely possible. I know that... Um, we... Uh, looking for planets and stuff that could sustain life. We're not looking at just planets and things. We all have do look at their moon sometimes. Um, especially in the case of, like, Jupiter. It's a gas planet. It doesn't really have, you know, like, a surface of the planet to land on, so you can't really have, you know, life or anything on it. However, it's moon, some of its moons, and I don't remember which one, but some of the moons are... Um, is it Europa, I think, is one where we're pretty sure there's water on it, and at least at one point in time, they were wondering if it was possible that there was, uh, forms of bacteria on the surface of Europa. So, who's to say you couldn't have, you know, a lush green landscape like this on a moon? Okay, now we need to... Oh, we kind of blocked off where the moon reflection would be with this tree! Uh, that's okay. It's harder to do reflections in rivers anyway, because the water's running, whereas in a lake, it's a little bit more still. And so you usually have clear reflections. I mean, not that it's still, but I don't know, something about it it just better for reflections i guess same with the ocean too i'm guessing it has something to do with the size because like this little tiny river you, you don't get the full reflection you just kind of get like a little bit of the lighting okay now we need to add a little depth to this green blobbery let's go a little bit warmer and a little bit darker that's really dark there we go and I'll add that to these trees too and I think let's add a little bit of Brown, grab that color right there. See what this looks like without all the sketch layers. Can't tell what anything is, but the colors are nice, right? Okay. So for the most part, I've been picking random colors and kind of going, Oh, this looks nice. This looks nice. So this is where I usually take some kind of a color. I think we're going to grab this purple. And we're just going to, actually, let's just go through the various blend modes because sometimes they're fun. Wait, I'm doing the blend mode of the brush. There we go. That looks like pastel. Kind of funny. 
No, that one's really pastel. I don't know, it makes my eyes hurt, actually. <laughs> the trees turned purple. I think it's because it of how dark I had the colors there. That's kind of neat, but really, really dark. Now that looks like something creepy, sci-fi, weird. Ouch. Okay, back to hue on like 20% opacity. Cause it, so it's a really slight difference. It just kind of ties it all together a little bit. No, I don't think it's that unclear either. Um, I mean, the trees in the foreground, you can't really tell what they are. And there's not a whole lot of definition between the various hills. Um, because I haven't added any much to that except in the sketch. Um, so I'm going to continue to work with the sketch, but no, I, I don't think it looks that bad with it being off. Um, all right. Um, actually, we're going to... I think... that on a really low opacity just so it makes it like a little bit paler so it looks a little bit further away actually I think better if we do a blue rather than a purple just because it's closer to the sky color like that I think there we go so you can see how it kind of makes them look like they're a little bit further away oh and I dropped my stylus Ooh. <clears throat> Actually, we should probably do something like that with the planet, too, because the planet isn't closer than the mountains. <laughs> Actually, what we maybe want to do is take the saturation down on the planet. So we're going to go put this layer in color mode and we're going to grab white. We'll take make it just complete grayscale. And I'm getting kind of sloppy there. Clean that up. Take the opacity. Hmm, how far do we want to go with this? I think like 40% looks good. Let's put this on top. All right, I think that looks good. Okay, so now let's add some shadows and stuff. So the way I like to add basic shadows, aside from playing with different color values, is I'll just take black on soft light, and it just kind of... Oh, there goes my pressure sensitivity again. Okay... Come on, come back. See, it's working with the eraser. And it's back. Okay, undo. Anyway, what was I saying? 
black on soft light. I'll take the opacity down because it's a little bit more extreme than I usually want. So I'll probably put it on like 30 or 50% opacity. Probably 30, I think. But I just want to add a little bit of depth to your shadows. I think. Sometimes when I'm drawing, I'll adjust the opacity and then do what I want. Sometimes I'll just like go over it and it'll look weird. And then I'll put the opacity where I want it. I don't really have a pattern for it. Like when I do one or the other, I, I don't know. That's kind of funny. So there we go. See, it just adds like a little bit. And then I could do the opposite and go over to overlay with a white and do kind of the opposite. You know, I'm not sure I'm sold on that snow. I might remove it. Let's see what happens if we just get rid of the snow. So with the snow, without the snow, with the snow, without the snow. I feel like the snow is distracting. So maybe it's like a temperate moon. There's, there's, doesn't get that cold on top of the mountain. And there goes my stylus again. Come back here, stylus. Made it less intense. I'm not sure because I mean I think snow is just kind of intense. That's what it does. Um, hmm. Now I think I'm just gonna ditch the snow. <laughs> We could, I suppose we could make there, like, less of the snow, so it's, like, just, like, a little tiny bit on top.
Okay, and we can try to tone down the color and make it a little bit darker. Because we don't have a real strong light source anyway, so. Let's go a little bit more like. Well, that doesn't look right. I think that works. And then... Okay. Went through all that effort to pull down the saturation on the planet, but I want a little bit back on the rings. Yeah, I like that better. All right, um, now we're gonna make my sketch a little bit less glaring. So with a clipping mask, we're gonna start adding some of the color. I think the sky is missing something. Let's add something to the sky. Yeah, definitely need stars. That would help a lot. Um, and I'll probably add those in a moment. But I just wanted to add like a little bit of like other color to it. Okay, let's finish with this clipping mask layery stuff. And then we will try adding stars. Is that working? Oh, I'm adding gray. There we go. Still doing a color that kind of stands out so I can see what I'm doing, but at least it isn't that gray, which at this point in the drawing kind of takes away from what I'm trying to go for. And then we're going to grab the blue, this river here. Oh, there's a little mountain over here that I never added color to. Oops. Okay, go 
back to that layer, grab the color, and that little tiny mountain bit in the corner. See, now at this point, now we have a better idea of what we're looking at and kind of, you know, like, sort of what it's going to look like at the end. Because now we can see the colors and the values and how the composition really holds up. And I think I'm going to do a lighter color here. And now we're going to do stars, which is, weirdly enough, one of my favorite parts. So I made a custom brush to do stars. Yep, that is super tiny. So we're gonna do like a really pale blue. And it's kind of like those. And then we're going to go a little bit more blue and add some smaller stars. And smaller still. Is there such thing as too many stars? No, never. Actually, I'm sure there is, but, um, and then what I'm going to do, back to a regular brush. And we're just going to add a little bit of color. Variation to these. Add blue. And now let's go for like a purplish blue. So we not all of the stars are like as vibrant as each other. Adds a little bit more depth. Um. Let's see. And we want some of these stars, I think, to be a little bit brighter. There we go. We're gonna stick these all in a group, add a layer mask, and get the stars off the mountains. Whoops. Away from the moon.
Uh, stars in the tree makes total sense, right? Goodbye, little stars. They're not gone, they're just hidden, right? It's crazy what stars add to a drawing. I always like to, like, like look at how much of a difference the, whoops, wrong layer, the stars add. I always find that crazy. All right, so now we can start cleaning things up and literally just drawing over the layers. So I'm going to stick these all in a group. And do I ever name my groups or layers? No, I don't. Should I? You know what, I don't really know. All right, we're going to... Get a circle. See, I know I didn't have a real round shape. Not too bad, I suppose. And now we can make this planet actually round. Inverse the selection and get rid of these parts. And there we go. Now it's actually round. Now, what we could really do is try to do the same thing with the rings, but I think trying to get a circle, well, an ellipse really that big is going to be a problem. So we're just gonna fudge it and hope that the shape that I sketched out looks about right anyway. Um, although we can, let's neaten up this moon here. Oops. Selection. Whoops. Using a slightly different keyboard than I usually do, so the uh, arrow button was in a, <laughs> is a slightly different uh, shape. So I was reaching for the option button so that I could, or alt button or whatever you call it. So I could adjust the size of the circle from the center, but I accidentally hit the left arrow key and just moved the circle instead. Do I have that in the right spot? I don't think so. Okay, I think here's good. So now I can take this light blue and go around it. Get inside of that. There we go. The moon looks a lot better now. All right.
Now it's a question of what thing do I want to tackle next? Let's let's look at the rings. Stick this color right here so I can get back to it later. And let's just go over it kind of solid. Actually, I'm gonna ungroup this again. We're just going to group up. This part, and then this group right here, we're actually going to name it. This is the sketch. We want to access this because I'm going to slowly over time in certain areas turn the sketch off. That's doing a weird glitchy thing. Okay, there we go. So now I don't have those lines protruding. And then I can just right here. For the most part, I like to, when I'm doing things like this, I like to draw it kind of like how you would with regular paint where you just keep adding stuff on top and you don't really erase anything. So I do, I mean, I did pull my sketch layer out and stick a layer mask on it so I could kind of like turn off parts of the layer at a time. So I'm sort of erasing it, but I'm not completely, um, but I'm, I'm doing it that way rather than turning it off because there will be parts of the sketch that kind of like stay as part of the drawing and I'm not like, you know, totally... Because I mean like, if you think about like how people draw like character art and stuff, they'll do like a sketch or a couple sketches and then they'll do the line art on top and then they'll turn the sketch layers completely off and then add color and shading. And that's not really how I usually do things. I mean... Some sketches will get turned off because they're just, like, too messy. Um, but I like to kind of just kind of, like, draw on top of it. So rather than turning it off, if I don't like something, I'm just going to... So, like, the line art over here on the mountain, rather than turning it off, I'm just going to, like, cover over it. And... And there, now that the sketch layer's gone, and I didn't have to turn anything off. And so that's usually how I like to, to approach uh, drawing, especially things like this. You know, I, I think my process is a little bit different when I try to draw, like, people or, or even animals. Not that I draw animals very often, but... Um, but when I'm doing things like this, mountains and stuff, that's usually how I go about it. I think we want a little more contrast, so let's grab a darker color. Actually, let's add some gaps in here. So let's go in here with the sky color.
it's in the same spot. I don't like that spot. Let's do it. Let's do like a little tiny line right here. It's too far away up there. Looks like we need to adjust the stars a little bit because they're kind of encroaching on the wing rings. There we go. One ring. It's kind of messy, but we'll we'll neaten it up in a bit. Then you'll notice that the two rings, they're actually slightly different colors. So if I put it like right next to it, then this back one is a little bit more gray. Which helps it to look like it's further away. And probably I could make the contrast a little bit more extreme if I wanted. But I think this works. that little blob. Whoops. All right, let's, whoops. Yeah, it doesn't quite work. All right, I'm gonna try to add like a little glow around the planet. 
Just because I think that looks cool. color purple so let's take some of the darker purple there we go that up here Soften the colors in the sky a little bit. Oops, grabbed the wrong color. All right, I think let's go back to our initial color layer and let's neaten up this water a little bit because I think that'll make things easier.
Actually, I'm a little intimidated by the water. Let's do the mountains. I feel like I've gotten kind of quiet, quieter as we're doing this. I don't know if I'm just focusing harder or I've just run out of things to say. <laughs> or maybe a little bit of both. So at this point in the drawing, I don't get any new colors. I just color pick colors on top of, or from, that I've already laid down in the drawing. And then I will mix colors, kind of like how I showed before, where like I lay one on top of another low opacity, and then pick that color up. But I won't go over to the, the color thing over here and get anything new, um, or at least not very often, not at this point in the drawing. Um, one, an issue that I find that I run into a lot is, um, I'll hit the option key to get the, the color dropper tool, um, and I'll start drawing, but sometimes I'll hit other, because I love keyboard shortcuts. They're something that, I don't know, it's a, it's a big part of my workflow with, with drawing. Um, so I'll use the keyboard shortcut for switching to the eyedropper for, uh, moving layers around um, for adjusting my brush size but the thing is that sometimes when I'll I'll hit one and then I'll go to the next keyboard shortcut that I want to use without letting go of the first one which means it ends up being a completely different shortcut so like what I'll often do is like I'll hold down the option key to get this and then I'll hit the key to uh, adjust my brush size without letting go of the option key and what ends up happening is I end up selecting a different layer and so sometimes I'll find myself drawing in the wrong layer and that's that's always you know anyone who's done that before it, it's it's frustrating especially since you know like sometimes you know sometimes you'll have drawn on a layer that you know that you want to turn off um, or, you know, it, it, it can cause problems, and I think because of the way I go about drawing, like I said, I, you know, draw over things, it's not as big of an issue for me as it might be for other people or other drawing styles, but, you know, best case scenario, it's super annoying. Worst case scenario, you cause some major problems and you might have to redraw some things, which is always frustrating. I just realized that there's a thing that I have not done this entire stream and that's save. So we're gonna stop and hit the save button. Not saving is just as dangerous as drawing in the wrong layer. Because you never know when something will crash and you'll lose your progress.
See, this is where my initial little zigzag stitch on the mountains comes in handy because it kind of gives me an idea of how I can add the shape to. You see, I keep switching layers, so we're going to lock these. So that if I accidentally go to the wrong layer, then it won't let me draw. Unless I move the layer. That was an accident. There we go. little peaks and stuff in here. Here we go. Oh, my hand's starting to cramp up. Gonna have to finish up soon, <laughs> regardless of what state this drawing's at. Let's see if we can finish it up, though, before my hand cramps too much. Maybe I should stop and stretch my fingers out a little bit.
Well, we're getting close to being finished. All right, it seems like now it's time to tackle these trees. Trees are always interesting. Uh, way too dark. There we go. Layers locked. Can't draw on it if it's locked. Okay. Trees that are further away are definitely easier because you just kind of do some. Simple brush strokes and just kind of like imply the tree rather than draw the tree itself. Gotta make these ones.
get to tackle these trees that are closer up long layer. <sighs> Those aren't the greatest, but they're not bad. Now these trees. Oh, look. Yeah, it goes a little... Alright, I'm gonna go back to the darker color. The funny thing about these trees is just like with the mountain, you have to remember that they're kind of three dimensional. So you can't just draw like one side and then the other side and, you know, like a cartoon Christmas tree because there's, there's a little bit more to it than that. You got a little bit of. Kind of a lumpy tree shape. A little bit of there we go. It's a very bushy, fluffy tree. A little bit of shadows. 
such and such. And then I think I'm gonna add a little bit more highlights. Bit of that stuff. It's a very thick tree. Very fluffy. Make a good Christmas tree. All right, I think pretty nearly breached a stopping point. And I mean, I could go on adding details and stuff for, you know, forever, honestly. But I think I'm going to add some shadows and stuff. And I'm doing this all in like with black on a soft light layer. It's really harsh. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of that, but we're not going to have it so harsh. So we're going to just add a little bit of shadows and stuff. And let's add some highlights. I always try to do as much of this in my coloring as possible so I don't do this a whole lot at the end. But I still do it a little bit because I feel like it just sometimes things just get a little flat and you just need to add a little something extra. I think at this point, I think we're gonna stop here. There's more that could be done with it, of course. You know, 
feel like some of the mounds could take use a little bit extra texture. There's not I don't feel like there's a whole lot of contrast, but I've been here for like two hours, so I feel like it's a good place to stop. <laughs> 